Hello, I'm your internet pal Josh, um, coming to you from uh, Windy, Royal Oak, Michigan, um, for our Wine Wednesday review for this week. And as usual, we have a Michigan wine, uh, this time a Michigan red, and this is uh, Restricted Cuvée, or sorry, Unrestricted Cuvée number 7. Uh, the 2015 vintage, and this was produced and bottled by Mackinac Trail Winery in um, Petoskey, Michigan. Uh, Mackinac Trail is um, uh, located in the uh, tip of the mitt um, AVA in northern Michigan. However, I, the wine itself is just labeled Michigan, which means the grapes can come from anywhere in Michigan. And um, up to 25% of them can even be from out of state. So um, <clears throat> I don't know the breakdown on in-state versus out-of-state on this wine. I'm not sure. Um, it's a blend of three different grape varieties, um, all uh, Bordeaux uh, reds. So, and all three are grown in Michigan. Um, some more than others, though. So um, it is 20% Merlot. 28% Cabernet Franc and 52% Cabernet Sauvignon, which is unusual for Michigan. Um, it is grown in Michigan and there's some very fine ones, but um, not very common. Sorry, got a little bit of sniffles there. Um, so uh, let's go down the vital statistics. Mackinac Trail Winery is located in Petoskey, Michigan. Uh, the uh, winemaker is Dustin Stable, or Stabile, um, not sure, I'm not personally equated with Dustin, um, and um, unrestricted, sort of a mysterious name, um, we'll get into that in a minute, um, and it's the 2015 Vintage, 13.8% um, alcohol by volume. Excuse me again. Um, so, what does unrestricted mean? Um, there's um, a couple sentences on the back of the wine label. Um, so here they are. A world of hard rules incurs fixation on what things should be and limits our opportunity to experience an unrestricted journey of life. The artistic essence of this wine began in the soil of our vineyards with the utmost care and wisdom. We have devoted years to the virtuosity of this wine. Um, so, I am rather unclear as to what that means. Um, I like the idea of being sort of unrestricted, not being limited by um, what what people say you can or can't do. Um, I think innovation is something that is not always um, um, that is not always a part of um, winemaking culture. Um, around the world, uh, especially in Europe and in the U.S. Um, whew, big gust there. Um, my notes are still here. I have one hand on my notes to keep them, keep them from blowing away. So, um, now the confusing part to me is it talks about this um, wine began the soil of our vineyards. Um, Mackinac Trail Winery is in the tip of the mitt um, AVA, um, which is uh, too chilly um, to grow Merlot, Cab Franc, or Cabernet Sauvignon, um, at least as far as I know. That's my impression. Um, uh, the tip of the mid AVA is populated with grapevines from um, the University of Minnesota uh, hybrids program. Uh, grapes like La Crescent, Marquette, um, um, uh, Petite Pearl, I think is one of those two. Anyway, um, there's a lot of those. So, and this doesn't say estate bottled. Um, all it all it says is it says produced and bottled by Mackinac Trail Winery. Um, this may have been um, produced by somebody else or produced for somebody else. Uh, the Mackinac Trail Winery name isn't on the front labels. You can see, um, just says uh, Cuvée Number no. Seven. 2015 unrestricted. So uh, this may have been made at Mackinac Trail 
winery for somebody else. Um, I really should have researched that before I made this review, uh, but why start re researching things now, you know, at this point, you know, 10 years into the blog, why, why bother? People expect poorly researched reviews. So, so, um, let's pour some, let's see what it's like. This is 2015 vintage, uh, which is one of the lost vintages in uh, the state of Michigan. Uh, we had the polar vortex sweep in and pretty much trashed the 2014, 2015 vintages. However, you do still see some wines from those vintages. Uh, some grapes did survive and some wine was made, but very, very little. And um, it was such a catastrophe that many um, Michigan winemakers uh, ended up buying grapes from from Oregon and Washington and elsewhere uh, to try to get through it. Uh, normally when uh, Michigan winemakers are looking for grapes uh, from somewhere else to kind of get them through a tough spot, uh, they would uh, naturally look to New York State, um, which is kind of the closest uh, kin to uh, Michigan in the wine world. Um, but of course New York State went through the same polar vortex we did. Uh, same thing with Ontario, uh, so and they weren't able to do that that year. Anyway, so take a look at it here. Uh, color I would describe as brick red. It's pretty dark. Um, and let me get a sniff of it here. Um, so. Um, when I first opened it, uh, there was a little bit of a um, balsamic vinegar uh, kind of smell to it. That has really, it's been open for a couple days now. Um, this is the second day it's been open. Um, I took my notes yesterday after it had been open. Or no, I took my, no, I took my notes shortly after I'd opened it, just an hour or something after that. Um, and, and now it's been open for a day or two. Um, so it has changed. Uh, when I first took my notes, as I was trying to say, um, I got a bit of balsamic vinegar on the nose. I'm not getting that now. Maybe a tiny hint, uh, but only balsamic vinegar in the in the good sense, like not the kind of tangy sour sense, but the kind of sweet, uh, syrupy, slightly oaky uh, kind of thing. Bals good balsamic vinegar has going on. So. Um, in my notes, I have balsamic vinegar, cedar, and black currant. Um, I definitely get that kind of a black currant jam, maybe crushed black currant. Um, and the cedar definitely comes through. Um, maybe a little bit of spice on the end, like maybe a, a pink peppercorns or a white pepper, something like that. A little bit of like a five spice pow powder, something like that. Anyway, for the palate. Um, you get a little bit of raspberry jam. Uh, get a good amount of leather. Um, get a little bit of pepper on the back end. <laughs> yes, doing that weird thing with my mouth really does make a difference. Um, I am again getting a little bit of that balsamic vinegar. But again, the good bits, and it's kind of on the back end of the palate now. It's gone from the nose to the back end. Um, so let's take a look at the, let's give the finish a try here. <coughs> it's a kind of typical kind of a Bordeaux uh, finish, oak and tannin, um, a little chewy. A little bit of tartness in there too, although that tartness has faded since it's been open. Um, so, um, <coughs> this wine, when I first opened it, I wasn't too hot on it. I thought it was um, a little too aggressive. 
Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but now that it's had a day to breathe, um, and it does have a screw screw top, by the way, so you don't have to worry about sticking corks in or any of that nonsense. Um, so it's really calmed down. It's become uh, more. Um, it hasn't necessarily become more complex, but it's become more elegant and kind of more balanced. Um, some things were kind of out of balance when I first opened it. Um, this leads me to believe that I probably should have left it in the cellar uh, for another year or two. Um, but I was, you know, you know with, some, with some wineries, um, you never know what you're going to get. I've had kind of mixed experiences with Mackinac Trail before. In the past, the first bottle I ever bought from them was kind of a disaster. But since then, everything I've had has been really good. Um, and I'm kind of, they're kind of starting to grow on me, I have to admit. Um, this is a good wine. Um, I really appreciate that they're uh, trying to do something outside the box. Like I said, uh, the wine industry needs more innovators. Um, it's hard to do in such an old um, and kind of tradition-oriented industry, but um, I think we can still do it. Um, innovate in terms of grapes and processes and so forth. So, I'm going to recommend um, Unrestricted Cuvée number 7. And again, it's a Merlot, Cab Franc, and Cabernet Sauvignon blend um, in ascending order. And um, I really like it. It was really, it's really good with food too. I've had it with pasta, and um, with pasta dishes and pork chops, and uh, grilled pork chops, and it went really well with both. And like I said, it seems to be getting better and better, just even as it's in the glass. So, um, if you see it, get it. Um, <clears throat> I think they've done other vintages and other cuvées of this too, uh, so check those out. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I would even recommend, if you get one of the 2015s, wait until next year to open it, see how it's doing. Um, it, it's any judgment about how, as it kind of more quickly oxidized in my glass and in the bottle these past couple days, it should, it should really improve. So, um, right, my neighbors, I think, are having a little bit of fun. So, um, I think that's my cue to end. So, uh, thanks for dropping by. Um, I hope you and your family are and friends are doing well. Um, peace to you.